Hey guys, Mike here from Ecom Knives, and today we're going to do a backyard heat treat on our uh, beginner knife. Now, if you've been following along in the series, I've been trying to make it as beginner friendly as possible. And for my first 12 knives or so, this is how I heat treated them. Uh, but the heat treat is kind of the heart and soul of the knife. It's a, it's a very critical and important step, so I never sold those. I, I, I ended up keeping those, uh, those first knives for myself, uh, just as part of uh, the learning process. Now I send out my heat treat to a professional heat treat facility, uh, Peter's Heat Treat in Pennsylvania. Uh, if you plan on selling your stuff, you might want to look into that as well. Uh, but for right now, being that you're learning, we're be all beginners again, so we're going to do a backyard heat treat. Now let's start off the meat and potatoes of it. This is what they call a brake drum forge. So this is literally a brake drum from a car. Uh, then you get a two inch flange right there. Drill some holes and bolt it in. Do not get galvanized pipe. This is a mistake. Uh, galvanized when it gets hot will uh, emit toxic fumes. So yeah, just uh, get black pipe. That's this stuff here. As you can see, it rusts wonderfully. So it gets a couple of sections of two inch pipe. Screw on your brake drum. Try to get a bigger one than I did. Maybe something a little deeper. Uh, but that's what I had laying around. Uh, this little rubber connector, some two inch PVC pipe, and a hair dryer. Try not to piss off your wife too much. Okay. I also picked up one of these, those things that go in the kitchen sink. You rip this rubber thing off, and that other thing, and that prevents all the charcoal from going down there. You're going to need an oil to quench your blades. So I got this stuff. This is a Wesson vegetable oil. Any vegetable oil, you can get the no-name brand is fine. So pick up some of that. Uh, this is just an empty container to put the oil in. Something I could fit the blades in. Metal is much much better and safer than plastic uh, obviously plastic and hot stuff does not mix uh, I used it before and it will distort a little bit just be wary of that I also got one of these heat guns these temperature guns here Ooh, warm today uh, you want the oil at about 125 degrees and I'll show you how to do that once we get started okay you're also obviously you're going to need your knife with the edge is about a millimeter thick and you can see I put the sharpening toil in there the sharpening notch rather so this is all good to go get yourself a pair of pliers or some kind of tongs uh, that you don't mind getting really really hot okay safety equipment definitely need some eye protection and a pair of welding gloves. I got these from Harbor Freight. Uh, they're not the best, but they do the job. So that's just fine. Okay, now fuel for your fire. I use your standard charcoal briquettes. These guys here, the square ones, Kingsford, whoever makes them. Uh, don't use that natural lump stuff. It will spark like crazy. And of course, lighter fluid to get it going. And of course, uh, very, very important, we are playing with fire now, so get one of these just in case. Hopefully you don't need it, but you can never be too safe. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna fill this with charcoal. We're gonna fire it up, and then I'm gonna put a piece of metal in there and let it get red hot because I wanna heat up that oil. Uh, one thing to note, and I'm doing this on purpose to show you why you're not supposed to use tubing, okay? Don't use a pipe, don't use... An Use flat stock if you have it. Any kind of metal works. Uh, I'll show you exactly why uh, you're not supposed to use this. So, all right, here we go. All right, guys, I almost forgot to mention, you're definitely gonna need a magnet. See, I got, you don't need this huge type like this. It's covered, all, covered in crap, but you need some kind of magnet. Because the idea is we're gonna heat the steel up to non-magnetic. So once it's hot enough to where it doesn't stick to the magnet, uh, that's when we're gonna quench. We're going to dip it in, uh, in the vegetable oil here. Okay? <coughs> but, uh, oh man, I forgot where I was going with that. Oh yeah, uh, you don't want it 
cherry cherry red okay you just want it uh, just starting to glow red is kind of an indicator it's kind of hard to see in the daylight and also as you can see my flame is kind of weak but this is why we have the hair dryer here so we're gonna turn on the hair dryer find the switch there we go that'll get the fire going I'll give you an idea of just how hot it is in there you see yeah, super hot in the middle I can't even get much closer than this I'm zoomed in right now and I could just feel the heat and uh, that little piece of square stock is starting to glow and once that starts glowing, I'm gonna take it and dunk it in the oil here. We want it, like I said, 125 degrees by the time you quench the blade. We're at 84 now. So when we dump it in and we take the temperature again, we're probably gonna end up seeing about 150 or so. Uh, but that's okay because by the time we put the blade in, it'll be 125 or about there where we need it. Red hot. And this is why you don't use tubing and oil. I'm mixing it around to get the temperature even. Okay, we're at 180 degrees and it's dropping pretty quickly, so let's get that knife in there. The most important part to heat treat is the blade itself. Watch the tip, you don't want to overheat it. If your tip is glowing bright red, you're overheating. So don't put the tip in the hottest part. You may even have to move it around a little bit. Now this happens pretty quickly, so keep an eye on it. Ooh, I'm adding more charcoal to it so the flame doesn't die down. I get a nice hot fire. Again, watch that tip. Okay, you can see it's just starting to glow a little bit. It's getting close. You want to test periodically. I'm still feeling it's sticking to the magnet, but it's getting weaker. Back in it goes. Ooh. A face shield isn't a bad idea either. Okay, we're now magnetic. I'm gonna put it in, all the way, and do some figure eights, slow figure eights in the oil. Whew. Shut that off now. Now that I'm melting. See my plastic jug survived but every once in a while you get the flame up 
and uh, obviously plastic and fire don't mix. Okay, that's what you're going to be left with. Let me wipe this down and bring out a file and show you how you can tell if it worked or not. Okay. Now obviously the blade is still very very hot, but you certainly don't want to touch it. You want the file to just kind of skate across. You hear that? And you want to check the tip, check the heel. You want to get that same sound all the way across. If the file is biting in instead of skating, you didn't get heat treated. Uh, it, it didn't harden. Yeah, see? The file is just skipping off. It's barely taking the scale off there. Okay. Next step is going to be tempering. And once this cools, cools down, I'm going to wipe some of this garbage off of it. All right. Careful not to drop it in this stage. It's very, very hard and we want to temper it and kind of reduce the hardness a little bit. Uh, this is about as hard as the file. That's why the file skates across. All right, sit tight and tempering is up next. All right, guys, the blade's cool enough to touch now. You can see I'm trying to take uh, some of that scale off and the way I'm doing that is just some fine sandpaper. This is 400 grit. You just kind of go over it and sand it lightly. The blade's still super hard, so all it's doing is knocking off some of that scale. And you obviously don't want to use like a 120 grit or a 60 grit or something like that. You could even use a wire brush, just something to get some of that black crap off of there. Okay? See, that's all. We're not looking to remove any metal. We're just taking some of that black off, because all that's going to do is clog the belts on your machine later. See, it comes right off. I've even uh, let this soak in vinegar, and uh, the vinegar is kind of a, a mild acidic, or kind of a little patina in it, but that doesn't matter because we're going to be finished sanding and finished grinding. Uh, so you can do that to get rid of the scale soak it in vinegar and hit it with the wire brush. I just hit it with a little sandpaper. You know, get as much off as you can without going too crazy. Like I said, we're not looking to remove metal. So, while I'm doing this, I got my little oven heating up to 400 degrees because for the temper, we're going to want to let it soak in the oven at 400 degrees for an hour. Let it cool, air cool for 15 minutes or whatever it takes to air cool. And then uh, put it back in for another cycle at 400 degrees. And that'll soften it up just enough to where it, uh, it's a usable knife. Then we'll finish it up. Okay, I got my little toaster oven here, of, uh, a real oven. Like the one in your kitchen is probably going to be a little more accurate. Uh, I have it set to 400 degrees. 400 degrees actually inside, not what it says on here. I have to set it to 425 to get 400 inside. So just double check that. That's kind of critical. Uh, too much or too little and you're going to get the wrong hardness. So try and get that 400. And it's going to do one cycle for an hour. So I'll come back in an hour, let it air cool, put it in again, and uh, repeat the process. And then we should be ready to finish this thing up. You see, what she is in there. You should get a straw kind of hay color when you're done. All right, see you in two hours. All right, guys, that's the final temper. I just pulled it out of the oven. Still nice and hot. As you can see, we still got that straw bronze color, and that is what you're looking for. So I'm just going to leave it hanging vertically like this tonight uh, till it cools, and tomorrow. We'll get to work on it. Alright guys, good night, and I'll see you on the next video.